This video is about how I got this filing cabinet to be able to be a single drawer rolling filing cabinet, not mounted on the wall, fully open and not tip over. With a one drawer filing cabinet, you pull the drawer out, the filing cabinet falls over. So I want it to make a stand up leg that will automatically fold down as you pull the drawer out and then fold back up as you push the drawer back in. And the first thing I want to do for that is make these tabs where the, uh, where the screws go through. There, now you can see them. Make those little, little ends. I want to be able to fold them up a bit. So we are cutting back the middle here. And I've got, uh, I've got at least two different options of how I want to make the folding mechanism actually work. But that'll be in a few minutes. So we got that, and we're gonna try to find a way to get this to uh, fold fairly straightly for me. Oh, easy, easy. I don't know what I was so worried about. Okay, the next one's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but this was fairly easy. A little bit more, there we go. That went nicely. I mean, it is only like a sixteenth of an inch of steel, but I'm just like, get all the big tools out. Try to like this, maybe. I don't mind if they're not exactly the same height. So then the idea is, oh wow, that actually fits on pretty nicely. I'll be able to get one screw in from this side, go in one direction, and then a screw in from the other side, go in the other way. I'll have to do something about this edge, or this edge, whichever one is gonna be on the, uh, Whichever one is going to be in the way. I was actually thinking of making something like this out of an old mouse trap or a new mouse trap, but found that this exists instead, and that should ooh, that should actually do pretty nicely. So I'm trying to build this so that it'll fit down in between this edge and that end of the spring, and that is a barely right there. All right, maximum safety here. Drilling into end grain, holding it with my hand. We're gonna proof of concept before I really get into like the actual file cabinet building because if I can't make this mechanism work, the whole thing is not gonna work. Now that was one part that I was concerned about was that it would tip the wrong way. So we're gonna undo this and we're gonna cut an angle over on the miter side and then we can cut it to length too. And it'll be a little bit more up because of the screws. We either go a little bit more or we dig out part of this. That is crusty AF. We're gonna have to get some grease on that. That is like, like there's a lot of spring action going on there, but it doesn't. I have bike oil upstairs. There we go, already. So much better. Man, bike oil solves so many of my problems. And get some in from the backside too. I mean, if you don't give love to the backside as well as the front side, then you're just leaving half the job unfinished. That's actually really smooth. Okay, so my pass vertical. I am. Here's my stick, and then I've got my wheel here. So, as this comes past the bottom of the shelf, right, so it's sitting in the shelf like this. As it comes past the bottom of the shelf, it kicks out. And then this can actually hold the weight of the drawer so the whole shelf doesn't tip over. And then when you need to push it back into the shelf, it does that, except we need to, you know, build a little ramp here so it doesn't catch. We're open enough that there's no way that putting any amount of weight on here is gonna have this leg collapse back in. Yay, concept proofed. And one part built. All right, well, now the uh, actual go do the plan and try to start building the thing happens. I made a video recently about why you should use a drawing program instead of a CAD program for woodworking, linked below. This quick and dirty plan put to paper is a great example of why. Including measurements, this only took me three minutes to plan out and get my cut list. And that is what I need for the drawer. Before I bought my track saw for quartz cutting, I made the circular saw guide. Check out the short I made about it, linked below. I used it to get close-ish chunks that I could then run more easily and accurately on the table saw. It's double the cutting, but definitely better quality. 
My tools are not really cabinet making grade tools, so I came up on these cuts twice. The first cut was to get the pieces to a manageable size, and the second got me to exact. I don't have outfeed tables or rollers, so I had to come up with some creative ways to get longer pieces cut on the table saw. This is one of the creative ways. Not sure what the safety people would say about this, but I think it's better than leaning over the table, trying to hold balance on a heavy piece hanging off the back. Let me know what you think in the comments. That should be 13 by 16 and a quarter. And if my math is wrong, then I rage quit. So my measures are good, my cut is good. Let's find out if my math is bad. And that is determined by do these go around it and shape to a box. Okay. We're, we're, we're on a good start here, this is promising. So, once I get my rails in, I will have a drawer. A sixteenth on either side. To get the rails in, I had to cut some small notches out of both ends of the drawers. I didn't have any good ways to do this, so I settled on score it with a knife and drill it out with the side of a bit. I know that bits aren't meant to cut on the sides, but they're cheap and therefore abusable. Yeah, that's a bit of a mess, but it is what it is. YouTubers like to show off how great their joinery is, but I see more value in appropriate work for the task. That means I don't care if the box isn't the absolute strongest it could possibly be, I care if it will hold what I want it to hold. And we'll throw a couple of clamps on here just for good measure, like a real YouTuber. Though with nails, I don't really need it. My circular saw needed a little lube before I could go making fine, fussy adjustments on its plate bevel, and that had to be worked in a bit. Tools can be unreliable when it comes to what they claim their angles are, so run some test pieces and check them. In this case, I cut two supposed 45s and checked with my square. That is super duper not square. I love how all the YouTubers are just like, yeah, you said it, based on what the saw shows you. That is as close as we're gonna get, I think. And then it's good, it's just like, if the saw says 45, then it's at 45 and you're good. And they never show you when it's off or when you have to fuss it or anything like that. So we're gonna do another cut on this one. Then I can mark top and bottom how far away it is from the line that gets cut. I'm making a measuring jig so I can cut from the top and get the back to be the length I want while still using my straight edge. I can measure that length, two and nine sixteenths. And this can be one and seven eighths. The first cut just gets me the miter I want. It only has to be square, not any set length. So if what I did instead was on the back side where I can actually grab a, an edge here, I measured the, what did I want? 16 and three quarters. And I can transfer that around with my square. So if I can get the cut to line up right there, we're good. And to do that, we can come back the one and seven eighths here. If anyone knows a better way to cut on the inside of a miter that establishes the outside measurement, please let me know. So we'll just kind of like, eh, it's pretty close and eh, and then uh. So we'll do that and we'll check to see that we have one inch here by stacking these guys up. It might be, it might be, uh, I think we'll be okay. Then I had to cut a groove for the back of the cabinet into all four sides and cut the back out as well. You've probably seen this tape technique a bunch of times. So we're gonna try to match up the front pretty good. I tried to use a little less tape than most people do and it ended up not working very well. It might have worked better if I wasn't working on a dusty floor and if I had cleaned the pieces before taping. Okay. Good start. There, all right. Now we get to try to roll all these up and get everything together all at once. And that's gonna be fun. Okay, well that can go on after, I guess. That tape really isn't doing much. 
it's really seeming to be a lot more about the uh, about the back piece. But we'll try to get this up onto the table saw after it's glued and squared up as best we can. I know that's not terrible. So as long as I get the height right for this one, it'll be fine. Because that one is a bit more of a groove and I can use, use some slidey action. Let's get your front position fussed. I used a small scrap of the rail metal to flush the front of the slide up to the edge of the cabinet. Well, that seems to be in there. Let me slide this over to this side and do it all over. So we want to just bring it out enough that we can get a screw in from the side on either side, but so that the weight will still be balanced inside the cabinet. Oh, that is snug. I needed a bigger space at the bottom than most people are used to seeing with drawers because of the wheel I wanted to add. So what I'm learning here is the drawer slides are actually not the hard part. I guess I can take these, take it right out now. It should be fairly straight. Yeah, there we go. Get the third screw in the back. Well, as far as a build a drawer that slides experiment, I think we're gonna have pretty good success here. So once this gets any weight in it, that'll be pretty tippy. Let's check how square we are. 21 and almost exactly a half. So we're a 16th minus there and a 16 plus. So we're out of perfect square by an eighth. So that'll make uh, cutting the front interesting. I just went back and checked and it turns out that it's less unsquare and more trapezoidal. Cause yeah, there's, there's my almost an eighth. I wonder if uh, my non-mitered box is any better. My actual drawer here didn't get mitered. 17 and almost a half. No, okay, so this, this is square. I can, I can make a square box easy. All right, let's see what we can do about getting a door for this thing. I wonder if I have a piece of MDF big enough. It'll be close. Hey, we can do it. Oh, you know what? I think I have a good idea how we can do this. I can use my, my that. I can use my that? Sometimes when things aren't going great, words fail. There we go. Drawer front. Yeah. I made a box. Tracing the box got me pretty close, but to get as perfect as I was going to care about, I came back and ran the router with a flush trim bit over the edges. Well, there's a little bit of a oopsie here, but all in all, it mostly did its job. One thing I think I might want to do before I do any of that sort of freehand stuff again is um, get the bigger plate on. Because when I'm, when I'm right on the edge, it's really easy for, for me to tip that a little bit. And that's what happened here. And it's just a little bit of tip down and a little bit over here too. Hey, Moose is getting tired. <laughs> I added wheels to the bottom and cut the kickstand to length. I also cut a sheet metal ramp that would reduce the friction between the drawer and the cabinet and get over the catch point on the wheel. We need to mount this as close to the front as we can. Jeez, that is tight. So that is gonna catch on that too much. I just have to cut a slightly longer ramp and an extra half inch this way. I used a bit of leftover ductwork tin for this. It's pretty easy to work with. I want that just over those. Okay, here we go. There. Oh, it's a bit stiff. But that does work. Now this is part of the geometry problem I kind of expected. At this point, this is not gonna go anywhere. I can have as many files in this as I want. And when I go to close it, I have to lift it up a little bit. And when I open it, I have to lift it up a little bit because it swings in an arc. Well, okay, so I can just ram it in. 
it will lift it if I if I push it hard enough but it won't extend unless I give it a little bit of a little bit of a kick you know I could be potentially okay with that it's an untippable single drawer filing cabinet we're gonna be vinyl wrapping this thing today so it looks better for photos and that means taking the handle off, taking the drawer out, getting everything cleaned up. Compared to painting, the amount of effort I would have to do to get this thing ready for paint and then to get it painted and then and then and then. Like that just doesn't sound fun at all. Vinyl wrap is great because it's a very fast and easy application. Its biggest downside is it will show any dust or imperfections in the surface you're applying it to and there's nothing you can do about that after it's applied. So you have to make sure everything is as smooth and clean as possible. I also wanted to clean up and round over the two top corners just a little bit. Sharp corners aren't great for things sticking to them, so after I burnished the corners with a little bit of round metal I had handy, I scraped off some leftover glue with a knife. I got a rough measure of how much vinyl I wanted, and then I used the edge of the box that it came in as a sort of straight edge to cut it. For this cabinet, it was easiest to start at one end and then wrap all the way around. Yours might work better if you start in the middle. I used a vinyl squeegee, which is basically a plastic card with a bit of feltish material on one side to really press the vinyl into the cabinet. Cutting vinyl is much more of an art than I'm making it look like, but I didn't have to worry about that around the casters because no one would ever see the butchery that I was about to do. This towel let me roll the cabinet over without worrying about damaging the vinyl. I've always been very proud of how minimally I can waste material when it comes to things like flooring, framing, tiling, you name it. But with vinyl, you need to know that it is an inherently wasteful process. You will be cutting off and throwing out significant chunks of material. I did need to be very careful on the front corners of the cabinet because those would get seen. I tried a few different ways on the back, testing in an area that I didn't care about much, and this is what I came up with that seemed to work alright. I cut a relief out of the corner so I could move the overhangs on the side and top independently. Then I pressed the side on fully and cut off most, but not all, of the extra. With the top pressed down over the extra from the side, I could cut a clean 45 degree through both layers. Peeling back the top let me remove the extra from the side that had stuck to the top, and then I had a perfectly aligned miter cut. While heat isn't required for this material, it does make it a little bit more flexible, and I used that to push it into the end grain of the plywood more completely. When I wrapped the front of the drawer, I didn't have very much care for the back at all because it would get covered by the drawer itself when I reattached it. With that, the vinyl wrap is done and it only took me about one hour. I got a question from CKUsel123 on my mini deck building video. Why not use any copper treatment on the fresh cuts or is this untreated wood? My answer is that on all of the top most vulnerable surfaces, I use the Resisto joist guard tape. As for the ends of the deck boards, the reality is for anything that's not ground contact rated as most pressure treated wood here isn't, these deck boards are specifically above ground use only, the pressure treatment isn't a magical rot saving technique that the manufacturers want you to think. In fact, the manufacturer of these deck boards recommends that you paint or stain it as soon as it's dry to the touch. They go on to ask, the other question I have is how you handle a slant away from your upper platform. You're measuring at the platform itself for the stringer height, but if the entire slab is slanted away, that doesn't indicate the full drop that stringer will see. Maybe with a two-step stringer it's not a big deal, but once you get to three, four, or five-step stringers, the run is so much further that the height distance from the platform to the foot of the stringer becomes more significant. Was hoping you would show some tricks to handling that because I'm working on a larger set of stairs that will need it. Hopefully this doesn't get to you too late, but there's no tricks here. In that case, I'd set up either a laser or a level on top of the frame of the deck and use that to measure down at the point that I think I'll need. If it's five steps and the treads are 10 inches long like mine are, then I drop my tape at 50 inches out and see where the laser crosses. That gives me the total rise and I work out my steps from there. If you need help with anything like this, or really anything at all, like bike maintenance, weightlifting, or how to clean your sewing machine, I've set up a channel on my Discord that I'll link to in the description where you can ask a question. I'll answer your questions in my next video and tag you when it's posted.